Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of Passion Woodworking. In the last episode, we worked on making our extension tables. I got all my stock cut down to the proper width and dimension of it, and I assembled all of the extension tables. Now, when I was doing the glue up and assembly, I made a mistake. Now, believe it or not, it happens. <laughs> Everybody makes mistakes, and I happen to put this side on the wrong side. So, the hole that is now supposed to be there is now here. So, I gotta fix my mistake. That's my first step. I'm gonna re drill the hole and I'm gonna fill in the old ones and then we'll start working on the rest of the project. I start my repair by sanding down any protruding edges for an accurate measurement. I then measure 4 and 9 16 to the right and one inch down for the proper placement of the attachment hole. I mark the hole and use a 7 32nd inch bit for the pilot hole. Since I don't have a drill press, I use a square to aid in drilling a perfectly vertical hole. Now sometimes pieces won't fit on a drill press and this is a good trick to use if that is the case. I now drill the final diameter hole with a 5 16 inch drill bit. I twist the drill back and forth and left and right to create micro adjustments for when I attach the t extension tables to the table saw later. I now use a razor blade to cut off any tear out and to chamfer the edge of the hole. I then use a sanding disc in a cone shape to finalize the chamfer. For the repair, I use a wood putty and sawdust mixture. I mix one part wood putty to one part sawdust. When sanded, this has a wood grain effect. It's a lot better than just using straight wood putty. When mixing, you want to make sure it's fully mixed. If it looks a little dry, add a little bit more wood putty to it. Using a screwdriver and my fingers, I use the wood putty mixture to fill the hole. I continue until it comes out the other side. Once it comes out the other side, I make sure to mound up the putty. This stuff shrinks a lot, so I want to be able to sand it flush later. I now use the putty to fill each screw hole. This is going to give it a doweled effect and a more finished look. And now I finish filling all the holes. Again, I take my time and make sure that there's extra wood putty to be sanded flat. Well, that takes care of the fixing of my mistake. Now those holes are nice and filled up and I can work on the final finishing of the extension tables themselves. After that, I'm gonna work on cutting that top panel that's gonna fit down into it and it's gonna be interchangeable. When I secure it from the bottom with screws, the top panels can be able to lift out and I'll be able to interchange it for just a regular flat surface to a router table or anything else that I can think of. For the finishing, I use a random orbital sander. I start with 100 grit sandpaper, then work to 220 grit, and finalize with 320 grit sandpaper. As I'm sanding, I make sure to round over all the edges. To start work on the extension table tops, I measure the width and the length of each table. As always, I make sure to measure twice and cut once. The top panels are going to be made from an old shelf that's particle board and melanine. In order to reduce tear out, I use masking tape to cover the cut line. I cut the two left top panels to a total width of 15 and 15 sixteenths. I now need to readjust my fence for the right top panel. Okay. 
As I'm running the right top panel through the table saw, I make sure that the board is flush against the fence and take my time for an accurate cut. With the top panels cut the width, I can now measure for their length. I then use my miter saw to cut the two left top panels to their length. The top right panel was a little bit too wide for my miter saw, so I had to clamp it down, make one cut, turn it around, and then clamp it down again and make the final cut. Well, that takes care of the final assembly, and here they are, man. They came out nice. The top can pop right out of it and uh, be interchangeable if need be. Now, the next step that I'm going to do is I'm going to spray the outside with some varnish and install them on the table saw so the end is in sight. I start by using compressed air to dust off each frame. I use a damp rag to wipe down the project. This will help raise the grain. I then use 320 grit sandpaper to sand down the exposed grain. This is going to give me a smoother finish. After sanding, I wipe down the frames one more time and spray my first coat of high gloss polyurethane varnish. In between each coat, I do a light hand sanding with 300 to 400 grit sandpaper. I then spray my final coat of high gloss polyurethane varnish. dry and now I have them installed on the table saw. Now with those interchangeable tops I'm going to be able to make a router table extension for this part and anything else I can think of. With this type of design it really opens it up to a whole bunch of different options. Now I really appreciate you guys watching and if you uh, like the video please remember to like, comment, and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. I appreciate you watching again. Thank you, you have a great day, and remember, stay passionate.